Um, okay, right. Um, I'm from Switzerland, by the way, in case you're wondering. Not from Germany. That would be an insult. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right. Um, Exdebug. Uh, who here is using Exdebug or Sentibugger or PHP Debug? Okay, awesome. Some people. Not a lot. Who is actually a PHP developer here? <laughs> yeah, okay. You should all be using Exdebug, but. Uh, I get to that later. Um, so it does a couple of different things. Uh, it provides new functions that you can use for debugging, uh, etc. It uh, changes the behavior of some core functions. Uh, it can do profiling, but most importantly, or what I'm going to focus today mainly, is that it implements a remote debugging protocol, which is super useful. Um, First, though, do not run it on live servers. Uh, it has an impact on performance, usually. And uh, if you run it the way I run it, it's also a bad idea security-wise. So it's purely for development purposes. It's purely for finding bugs, etc. Do not run it on live. Um, also, if you, if you get used to using Exabug to solve issues, you might get really annoyed watching people who do not use Exabug trying to solve an issue by it, you know how it works, like wild, wild dump, uh, printf, throw ex exceptions, change files around, etc. Um, that is the reason why I'm talking about this, because I want to see more people use it. I always get annoyed when people try to solve big problems in, say, a very complicated uh, stack using frameworks or stuff like Magento. And uh, they're trying to understand what's going on over like several layers of abstraction um, using printf debugging or print all debugging in PHP. Um, right, so just quickly, all this stuff it does besides debugging. Uh, the new function, it uh, new functions it adds to PHP when you install it. Um, you get co-coverage analysis, which is handy for people who like tests. Um, it has a couple functions for that gives you more information about uh, like that you could output where you are right now, in which file are you, what line, etc. Uh, also, one that's particularly useful, I find, uh, it's about get headers. If you're working a lot with uh, sending HTTP headers back um, from all over the place in your code, um, this is basically this gives you a list of all the headers that have been set uh, to be sent back uh, with the HTTP response. Um, this is now complete. I'm I'm a bit minimalistic with this. I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare, so I didn't go um, like through everything it does. Um, it may do other things you find you might may find useful. Um, I do not use these things. Uh, it also changes how PHP behaves in some ways. Um, one thing it does it includes a stack trace in error messages when when you whenever PHP shows an error. I think I have some screenshots of that later. Um, Var dump can do uh, colors on the console if you wanted to. Um, a limitation it introduces is it introduces a function nesting limit of uh, 100 functions deep. So if you have really weird software, uh, there's a chance it might not work anymore, it might crash. Uh, it will output that and tell you what's going on. Um, again, other things might change. This is, this is not complete. So this is a normal error message, as you may know if you have uh, display errors on in PHP configuration. This is how the same error message looks like when you have Exabug installed, which gives a bit more information. Um, can be useful. Um, so for profiling, um, it generates uh, files that you can analyze with the usual tools that you can use for other cache grind files, uh, K cache grind. There are some uh, GUI utilities so basically, you tell Exabug to profile a particular um, session. You get a file. You analyze that. Um, yeah, you see where the performance issues are. But that's a topic for another talk. This is like performance optimization. I'm more focused on finding bugs. So um, if you want to do remote debugging, usually when I, when I have like a new system running or something, if I just want to get it running really quickly because that I think is the main reason why a lot of people do not do remote debugging because it seems a bit complicated to set up but it's actually uh, quite easy if you do it this way. Um, you need to install the Exabug uh, uh, extension to PHP 
which you can either install through your distribution usually in uh, uh, Ubuntu or uh, Debian based installations it's uh, a package you can use a uh, pickle if you want to do that and uh, for for my way of using it, you basically need these two lines in the configuration. You will get an, a new configuration file for Xbox somewhere in slash etc slash php5 slash fpm if you use php5 fpm slash conf.d slash 20 dash xdebug.com or something. <laughs> um, you put in these two lines apart from the usual line about loading the php extension and uh, I'll show you later what that is the connect back and <coughs> remote enable. And then you have to set up your IDE if you use one. Um, Exabug also ships with a common line client if that's your thing. Uh, I find it super useful. I use it together with PHP Storm. Who uses PHP Storm? Okay, some people, some Eclipse users maybe? Okay, so um, Eclipse also supports the protocol that PHP uh, Xdebug uses to, uh, um, yeah, for the debugging sessions. Um, so when you set up your ID, you need to first configure your ID to accept incoming connections for the debugger and you need to set up path mapping because the protocol uses, uh, when it talks about files, it uses the absolute path on the server, so it, the, the absolute local file path on the server, so you need to tell, you have a local copy of the source code and you need to tell it how to match um, an absolute path that it gets from the server to your local uh, source code. I'll show that to you later. And then you can start remote debugging. You set breakpoints, or one breakpoint at least. Um, you enable your listener in your ID to um, wait for incoming sessions. Um, and then you start the, your debugging session in the browser. Um, back to the configuration, I, I have um, connect back mode enabled. So again, there's, there's different ways to set up xdebug. To me, the most convenient one is the connect back, which basically means you tell the server the web server basically is running your, your application. Um, I want to start an Xdebug session. Uh, connect back to me, and it connects back to your ID. You can do it other ways. You can set it up in a way that your ID you can connect to the server, etc. Um, this is the easiest one. Uh, very quick to set up. Um, again, potentially security um, a security problem if you have like shared servers or something. If the server is public. Um, if you configure it like that, everybody can start the debug session. And if you start the debugging session, you can get a lot of information you might not want people to have. Um, yeah. <coughs> Live demo. Let's do this as soon as I get out of this. Awesome. <coughs> right. Um, so for the setup of the IDE, oh, that's a bit small. Um, I'm using <coughs> PHP Storm here, as I mentioned. Um, just going to show you very quickly in the settings. You can't read it, but I'm using the filter here. Um, put in xdebug. Um, I get some configuration here that says uh, can accept external connections. That is set, so I already have it configured. Um, some other options that may or may not be useful to you. And then I have this little icon on the top left. Oh, no, this one. This little thing here, um, this is telling me um, whether I'm listening or not currently. So you can enable and disable it. You don't have to do it in the configuration all the time. Um, if I want to listen to sessions, to incoming debugging sessions, I enable it. So now my ID is listening. And I set a breakpoint somewhere in my code. Let's say I have an issue with my code. Um, I might not even have records. I have an issue with my code right here. I set the breakpoint. I go into my browser. Um, this setup, by the way, it's a Vagrant setup. Who's using Vagrant? Okay, some people. So I'm, I'm running, uh, this server is running in a local uh, virtual machine. So it's sort of remote, but it's still local on the computer. Um, you start a debug session by attaching a um, URL par parameter called um, Again, you can't read it, but uh, it's called Xdebug session uh, start, and then you can give the session a name. I usually use one, and that's it, but uh, can give it any name. Uh, when you do that, and you set the, as soon as the request goes out, and 
you hit the uh, breakpoint. I should probably change the resolution. Does that work with your setup, Michael? Okay. So now it's probably. Scale. Oh, no, it's scale. Scale. Yeah. Let's see if that works. Yeah, okay. So now I have a running session. The, um, the, the, the process running PHP on the server is suspended. Let's sit down. Um, and my debugger realized that I hit the breakpoint. And the uh, debug window here pops up automatically in uh, PHP Storm. I, I don't know how it works with Eclipse. I'm sure it's similar if somebody has experience, uh, tell us. And I have the whole, not only do I have like the local um, context, the local scope that I can explore with all the objects I might have that go like deep, several um, layers deep. <coughs> uh, this is a bit more information than you can get out by randomly um, while dumping stuff into your browser, I think. Um, there might be smarter ways to do this as well, but this works. <coughs> so I have the complete local scope, I have the global variables from which I might be able to um, extract, say, stuff like database passwords, etc., depending on how your uh, application is set up. This is, this is a typo tree CMS um, application, so it's relatively complex. Um, so I have the local function and its scope, and I'm at my breakpoint. I can step um, uh, over functions. Um, yeah, for people who are not familiar, you can, in a debugger, you can you can step <coughs> like just line a, a line further in your current in the current file you are in. Uh, if it calls a function, you can step into it. So, let's see if I find one. Where are we currently? Yeah, this is not going to work. Um, let's go step over for each. Um, so this, for example, now I'm at a point where I'm about to call. Um, a method on another class, so I can say, okay, I want to I wanna see what's happening there, so I step into that, and here I can either also step into the next method or step over, so go to the next line in this line. Uh, this way I can navigate and execute step by step, and uh, yeah, if I need to go back, if I need to get um, the whole, um, say, the scope of any earlier, um, basically I can, I can move here through the whole stack, through the whole call <coughs> stack. Um, all the way to where the thing is actually starting um, and again explore local variables um, uh, all the objects that are in the current scope of that particular um, position in the stack and then if I'm done with my problem or I want to let it run again and stop stepping I can let it run again and the uh, browser session loads if it's if it hasn't time out time out it until then all right um, you should also check out there's there's, there's other there's other debuggers and um, there's send debugger which is um, commercial so uh, I'm not sure if that's actually still a thing if people still use it um, but there's also PHP debugger which is kind of part of PHP 5.6 now who has used it Okay, nobody. Kai has, but he's okay. See. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future with with PHP debugger. At the moment, it doesn't. It, it does implement a remote debugging protocol, but nothing that I think can talk to IDEs. That's like widely implemented. So Xdebug has the advantage that it works with a lot of different IDEs. Um, yeah, a lot of different implementations, client implementations of the protocol. Okay, um, the one thing that happened to me last week when I was using Xdebug, um, I, was, I was trying to debug a problem on the other side of the uh, planet uh, in, uh, on a server in Switzerland. Um, I set up Xdebug <coughs> because I didn't want to copy the whole environment to my local um, computer. I was suppo just supposed to find, find one bug. Um, I set up Xdebug. I uh, asked it to connect back to my machine. It didn't work. After a couple of hours, uh, of searching, I found that it has a hard-coded connection timeout um, <coughs> for the connect back, and that timeout is 200 milliseconds. So if you run it over a slow connection, 
and it takes more than 200 milliseconds to establish a TCP connection. Xdebug will just um, you know, die before it actually starts the session. Um, so I actually I, I tweeted the uh, developer of Xdebug. That's all I use Twitter for anyway, to rant at people. And um, yeah, he seems to be open to make it configurable. But uh, until then, do not use it over slow connections because it might not work for your purposes. Um, also, it's one of the very few projects that have a Flatter button. Um, if people use Flatter, that's like the first time I actually could Flatter something, so they got my whole like $5 or something. Uh, if you use it, and you should really use it, please use it. Please go home and set it up if you don't already have a setup. Um, if you use it to find bugs, if you find it useful, probably a uh, good idea to flatter or donate to the project. All right. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. Does the file path mapping work with the FAR files as well? So if I'm so packaging my modules into ah. FAR files, I it's would assume it does. Um, yeah, as long as as long as the uh, the files are the same on the server and okay. But will it still be able to pick it up from within my ID and be able to track? I wonder. Can the do ah. the current IDs actually browse to the file files? Uh, file file is basically a zip file. I I'm not really yeah. sure how. The the problem is, can your IDE go like, oh, we need this particular file in yeah. this file file, and we display it to you now? I don't file know. I don't work with it. Structured exactly as. Yeah, it's basically yeah. a zip file. It's a zip file of different file. files. So you'd have to have a client that can, like that can do that. that our, our, by the time it gets to a web server, most of our code is packaged into far files. Yeah, I, I would not use, I, I mean, as I said, you use it on development servers uh, or like local development instances. And uh, I would not use far on that, I'd say. I don't see the point in that, ideally. And uh, maybe the path mapping, because I didn't show it, um, the server configuration, or server-specific configuration, it's very simple uh, in uh, Xdebug. Uh, in in uh, PHP Storm, you set up a server connection. Name doesn't really matter much, because it's a connect back. And then here you have the mapping. Um, here you have the local files, and here's the absolute path on the server, and that's it. I would assume some with file files, you, you can probably debug it, but I. I would think not all clients might support it. That does did at least everybody get what this can be useful for, more or less. Like it's not like I was just talking and nobody okay, cool, awesome. Because it is really, really, really useful. And whenever I force someone to start using it, they keep using it. It's just the initial like you need to set it up, you need to know how to like how to set it up, how to use it. And then after that it saves you literally hours of time. Especially if you if you often like have bugs that take five hours to find. If you work with code that you haven't written yourself, some complex frameworks. Um, how, how does it work sequence? with a MVC framework? Have you tried using this with MVC framework like yeah. say Cake PHP? Or yeah, I mean I I do some Symfony stuff. Um, Typo Tree is basically it's like part of it. I MVC. Right, right. Um, I think where it's where it's where it gets a bit tricky um, when you use. And there's like too much proper software engineering in place, and you have dependency injection, things like that, things like that. Um, you might not always have the objects that you want in your in your scope, um, but I I find it still still quite useful. Yeah. Um, I'm quite new at this, but recently I was using uh, Xdebug and uh, Symfony, and it was a database. Uh, it was some database connection, and it keeps getting out the try catch block. So. Yeah. Um, after one day, I figured out one of the settings was that I didn't set it to not now. Um, hmm. Is this like a common, is that? Xdebug, you didn't set Xdebug? Well, no, uh, the database. Oh, the database. So okay. Xdebug didn't help me out, he just keep going out of the catch block and I couldn't catch what oh. the error was. And I don't know, maybe it was related, uh, I, this question, I, I mean, my question I guess would be in that sense that could Xdebug do something Bugging database, or I mean, my question might be quite simple. Um, well, you that. you might want to use it. Say, if you're using a framework, you have like several layers of abstraction until you hit the actual code that sends uh, queries to the database. So you might want to use Xdebug <coughs> to hook in there and and see what gets sent to the database. Maybe that helps. No, I'm fine. But yeah, we can take this offline. Yeah, but what he says is true. You probably 
at the point before it hits the database, inspect the oh, variables. Okay. Uh, inspect the variables before it actually gets thrown into the, the right. database connection. Yeah. Right. Symphony itself has its own lot of uh, Oh yeah, they, they have yeah. it. It's, it's just that yeah. one thing that got me that I did, didn't click the not now mm -hmm. button. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Right. All right. Yep. So, thank you, Claudio. Yeah, awesome.